Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's a very, very nice environment. So this is, uh, I will speak, uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Sylvie Peychard, Rosa Price, uh, recently moved to Potsdam, and Peter Fritz uh, from TU Berlin. So, so that's, I will try also to, given this talk, uh, uh, I will be, let's try to speak a little bit, like uh, I try to sum up a little bit some of the themes that they were given in this uh, masterclass. So I'm the last one, so I can, <laughs> so I try to, that are very important to work past. And um, I think there will be some themes that they were, you have already seen, and I will try to put all of them, maybe, and some then about the recent result. Uh, the theme of renormalization, what happens in road paths, and so on. Because we already have a very nice talk about road paths and about the translation and renormalization of road paths. I try to give, first of all, a motivation. What is a, so why people, they define translation of road paths, why it is the point. And so this is more OD perspective than working on road path as a road path. And then we try to speak that from this perspective, why it's natural, so what is the renormalization, I'd say, of parts of my personal view on that. Eh? So this, I'm not uh, giving universal law here, just tell you how I understand renormalization in my personal view. And also, I will speak about this smooth case, uh, uh, this um, uh, soon, uh, it will be soon online. Okay, so the idea is, okay, that's a little bit, okay, you see. So the idea is, is the following, so it's a, we start from a very basic question, why road paths were invented? Eh? Why road paths? And it's a little bit all around, no? Road, where road paths invented? And the answer is, okay, I mean, sometimes in life have, eh? the, the answer is, is simple, it's one sentence. It's like to solve, you see, eh? so like, okay, to solve, um, equations, let's say control, like con control, control equation in a continuous way, way from the worst data. So solve continuous and from worst data. So what this is really, in some sense, the motivation of road path. And I give you the meaning. So the idea is the following. So consider, I speak about all these. So something can, can follow me. It's also, it's like, I mean, everybody can contribute and if I have question. So the idea is like, consider like the simplest, eh? like I control OD, and let's say X, you have a source, Y is your solution, and you have F, which is F. consider like this simplest controlled OD. So and you have, in which way you have to consider this equation, like you have your source and you have your solution, like a, a control system. Now I, I put uh, my source and the source can be deterministic, it can be stochastic, it's a very, I want to be very general. And so they, they live in some vector spaces, eh? V and W, it's like, and so I have this an input and output system, okay? And so the idea is like, usually for this type of system, you have a, a solution map. Okay, so this is especially for smooth and deterministic, you have a solution map. So S, that goes, let's say, from, okay, from say, the continuous function, continu let's say, uh, infinity function in V to infinity function in W. Okay, so this is a solution map, very nice. And so the thing is like, and uh, okay, so you want to understand the continuity property of this map when, let's say, uh, you have, uh, you start instead of continuous, you just go to the Hölder setting, right? So gamma Hölder. Okay, so is this map 
continuous anymore. So can we reestablish continuous? This is the problem. Yeah? And it's like, uh, if you think about uh, crazy stuff, what is the solution map? Uh, this is the, you, we already seen, uh, I mean, everybody also from the internet. So, okay. so the idea is the example are very basic so, about this map. So like example, so we all, we, we all know about this map. So example, so just take uh, B plus W equals R. So they want like simple, you know, linear constant. So then we know the solution. Our solution is just the exponential of AT, nothing like that. You see, uh, okay, this is a, a particular example, so I'm not here teaching you this, but you know, it's like, uh, it has some interesting features. It has some interesting features because this is, because, you know, like, uh, it's uh, maybe basic stuff. Okay, so you have this, of course, this is, uh, this is okay. <laughs> I think uh, everybody follow me. This is a exponen real exponential, so. And so, but now it's interesting now because like this uh, nonlinear map, this is the exponential. We can look at it, especially if X uh, is smooth. Okay, so then we can look at as a series where uh, you have appearing the following quantities. Iterated integrals of, uh, let's say, ta -ta -ta, and S2, uh, S, Dx1, Dx, and minus one. Okay, so even, power, so in one dimension, you have this object appearing, okay? So, you think, okay, the, this solution map, uh, that is, uh, if it has composed, can be decomposed in some, piece, in some um, pieces, and each piece is, is given by this object. Okay? It's a, uh, okay, like, for example, now, if you, I mean, now we start from first year mathematics, second year mathematics, and now, for example, now, if you, let's say you, you are like in uh, D, which is, Rd, and your solution, W, which is Rm, you have, uh, eh, you have a series. Eh? You can write down the same solution of this equation. Eh? Same, always with the linear uh, the matrix and so on. Um, you have done a series, and so this is like, uh, for, I mean, there are some physicists, so is a Dyson series, is the simplest example of Dyson series. Eh? So like, uh, eh? and what are the, and physicists can be interested also. I mean, and so, and what are the pieces of this of this sum? The pieces are integrals, iterated integrals. So, yeah, like, yeah, like one, one, one. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, we have of course our path, eh? which is now which is x one. And we have, of course, the delta simplex. One. And so you have this piece. So I didn't wrote down the series, but you know, time is running up always. So, but you know, there, there will be pieces like that. Huh? So the, your, your solution is guide. So some sense you really immediately see that this function has a, should play a role. Eh? in the solution map, eh? in what, that what was our problem. Eh? So, so, and so the idea of road paths, uh, which is uh, now, now we have seen some examples, now we can say, okay, maybe I have to endow, I have to enrich our initial path with this extra object, no? And this is the basic idea, but very nice idea. So, and the thing is like extending, X, let's say two, uh, and we call it with this whole notation, and I can take X, and I take now, here there is like a, the two simplex of the X, uh, tensor the X, and so on. I mean, you can, I mean, for our purposes, let's put it, let's take a finite map. Eh? Extending these two 
No, I just take a bigger. Then we recover continuity even in the Hölder case. That is really the main idea of Rothbard, that by not looking at, this is also, we also noted like this, I of X. Eh? Of course, uh, this is defined only if it is smooth, of course, this object. But extending this smooth object to this object, to this bigger object, we have, uh, we recover continuity. This is the point. Eh? We recover continuity. Okay, so, and not, not only because, okay, this object, uh, okay, you say, okay, this is like a, this does not leave, this is not simple, uh, you know, a path in a bigger space. And so this, uh, you know, the thing is like, uh, uh, you know, they're like, um, the result by Chen, 54, so XT takes values in a Lie group. Eh? You know, Lie group. Lie group, uh, which is also metric Lie group. Eh? So you have a distance. Eh? This is the free Lie group, eh? n step free Lie group. Okay, this is just to take. This is, and why it's not simple. The, so and why you have a group uh, because um, you have uh, relationships between uh, this object. Okay, this object it will be. Uh, an object belonging to the tensor algebra. And uh, these elements of the tensor algebra are not independent. Why? Because you have integration by part formula on smooth paths. And so that leaves you not independent relationship among the I integrals, and so you have a group. Eh? And it's a very nice, uh, one on, very nice, ah, someone, okay. Good. So, So now, okay, now the thing it's like, now we, we have two, two things. So it gives you definition like uh, a gamma holder of paths. Eh? So the idea is like, uh, let us start uh, from uh, a path with values in this group and not with the path with just component. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can reestablish continuity in this holder case. Eh? So a gamma holder of paths, just definition, it's just a gamma holder path. With values in GN. Eh? Uh, GN values. And let's say you can also imagine what is a smooth road path, even if the name is a little bit strange. Smooth. So of course, uh, okay, I have to make a precision. It's like smooth paths, eh? but not it's, we're not talking about the lifting of a smooth path to road paths. We're talking about smooth path at the level of the group already. Eh? Smooth paths at the level of GN. So it's the definition are be given. So because, because we have a metric here, the carnot caratheodori metric is like an intrinsic metric, and so, okay, it's not easy to compute, but you know, you can just give a definition and it's equivalent to some very nice property. So, definition of paths is here. And when I claim about uh, this, this recover, this is a, I mean, very well known theorem by Lyons. Uh, Lyons, the following. So, that, uh, uh, so now you will see a graph by some, something like you have already seen today. And so there exists a continuous map. Okay, so, okay, I will use the notation also. I will use the notation Roth paths to denote this space and gamma and Roth paths smooth, eh? so something like infinity to denote this space, okay? See, see infinity, see path, see infinity path, smooth path, in a value. Okay? So there is a continuous map. And you know, it's a E to Lyons map, what, what was mentioned today, which goes, let's say, from, I mean, this, this map goes from Pets gamma to, say, C gamma W, such that,
when x is smooth. So we have a diagram that commutes. Eh? So we have, we have, of course, here we have our solution map we defined before. Of course, uh, okay, uh, let's put it that. Now I lift two cross paths. Eh? Of course, uh, let's put it. I mean, of course, smooth paths can be lifted to the ground, okay? So then uh, I can define. Uh, that's exactly Lorenzo, more or less. This is the bigger space with this octeta space, <laughs> the space, and this is like the source. Eh? This is a little bit the same phenomenon that, that was, okay? And, okay, many of you know already this is, some of you know, don't know, but this is really the perspective with, in which, this was really the goal for which road paths were defined and they were introduced, to have a, like a commuting diagram of this way. And so then understanding the splitting, let's say, the solution map throughout uh, an inclusion, some space, and then uh, a map like that. So then this is a, okay, this is a little bit, uh, so the fact it's like this continuous map, and so that the fact that this commute and this is continuous, the idea, so then solving a, a, an equation like that, a controlled e equation, is really uh, constructing and uh, solving. Uh, so let's say uh, this is like uh, something like that is equivalent in some sense to construct x to construct construct x in a Hölder setting, which is not canonical. Of course, if it is smooth, it is a canonical way. If it's not smooth, you have to construct it and using, and that's where stochastic calculus enter, that's where other theories enter, okay? So now, okay, so let's go on. So now, what is renormalization? Eh? What is renormalization here? Renormalization. Because, uh, Exactly, that's exactly good, very good. So they say I of X uh, is a smooth road path, uh, but it's not the, the only possible smooth road path that, uh, for example, pure area road paths is a possibility that, uh, you know, like you have only an object in, um, uh, in, in uh, anti-symmetric matrices, and then you have an object which is a smooth road path, but not a, uh, the inclusion of that. But is there a normalization because you know, something like species, they say you, normalization to kill infinities. Here, there are no infinities. I'm sorry for people who expect infinities. So there are no infinities. There are no infinities. So, but, but still, what is the thing? We have not uniqueness. We have freedom of choice. Eh? So there are, so if I give you X here, this space, uh, I mean, possibility to construct uh, yeah, are not unique. So there is freedom of choice in the world of road paths. They're saying that you can, eh, there, are, uh, uh, there is a freedom of choice. Eh? And okay, for people doing stochastic analysis, this is uh, one possibility, it's like Ito calculus versus Stratonovich calculus. Eh? So, Ito versus Stratonovich. And you don't know. So it's like uh, people study, and so it is, big, and this Ito Stratonovich is the fact that you have different lifting. Okay? So, let's, uh, okay, let's go here. Five right minutes, good. So, then, Okay, let's, uh, okay, good. So what is then now renormalization? I just give you renormalization and just give you a little bit the final result, okay? What is now renormalization is, is given by what? So we have uh, this diagram, eh? I tell you. Uh, 
The idea is like a renormalization. It, you have to imagine as a continuous map that goes from road paths to road paths, or something like that, that acts on that, which has a, a dual, so this is my way of look of a serial normalization, which has a dual action, so is a, you have a map here, so you have your inclusion, your M, and your sigma, so, so there is a map, such that there exists another solution map M associated to a vector field, to, let's say, a vector field depending on your continuous map, your renormalization map, this is renormalization, such that, so you have SM, such that the result of your renormalization, you can read the result of renormalization in, for smooth paths, as a solution of another e equation. Eh? That's saying that any time you modify your road path, you can find a, a uh, two vector fields. Okay? Okay, then, you know, like, uh, now it will be a little bit uh, quicker because time is running up. So the idea is like, uh, what is the simplest way to do renormalization here? We have group valued path. So the thing, be, simplest thing is like to take a, a nomomorphism of this group and compose it with the road path. This is a, so like a, so translation, make it, are like maps that are in this group, eh? And uh, in some sense, in this way, you will op by taking a road path, this will always give you, eh, by, so, I mean, it's a group valued path, so with more or less, it will always give you more or less the, the same uh, object, no? It works in a group, of course, uh, in, uh, let's say, so if you, if you have a path with value here, then you apply an homomorphism, so then homomorphism. Of course, you have to preserve some older properties, but, and the name is translation because now, if you look at the differential, on the leaf group, it, it acts as a translation, actually. It acts as a translation on some component, okay? And so, then, uh, the idea is like a translation on some component. So, th what was, uh, the thing is about, it's possible to describe this action in purely algebraic way, and it was done uh, by uh, Peter, Rosa, uh, Ivan, uh, Ilya Chabirev. So you can, you can describe T algebraically. And so you say, okay, I, look, I just wrote a, wrote a formula, what is T, and I'll just, I mean, to describe the composition, no? Algebraically. Or, uh, or what you can do also is to describe uh, that is the, the thing about this smooth road path in to try to describe uh, this, uh, um, these things all on smooth and then passing to density, no? So then T algebraically, uh, directly, or T on smooth, and then working by density. Say, I, I watch what, and what is the advantage uh, of working, let's say, with a smooth object. So let's say that if you, and this is like, if you give me like a minute more, I just give you, uh, so this is like the well-known Maurer-Cartan form. So if you work, uh, if you have a path with values on a Lie group, uh, okay, you would like to find a way to take, uh, let's say, some derivative that belongs to the Lie algebra. Eh? But of course, uh, uh, if you, on any T, this object will not, so the Lie, the Lie group, the Lie algebra is the tangent of the identity. So what you have to do is like you consider, let's say if Tu, it is Xt minus Xu, and then taking the derivative of Xtu at T, eh? non T. So it is called your diagonal derivative. This object, this object corresponds with the Maurer Cartan evaluated at xt. And this object is always an element of the T algebra. This is really the point. And the case of smooth road paths, this is the key, the key object. 
And by working simply on a Lie algebra object, you can obtain basically most of the usual properties of rot pets. For example, translation here, eh? so this is like a, one of the possible properties, like uh, you know, the theorem, just give you the theorem. So like TV, TXC, with the T is a translation, can be described as a solution of the following differential equation. And you have the, the differential of T with the diagonal derivative, and of course, with the identity group. For example, TXT is the solution of this differential equation. Okay, and you tell me where there is the differential of T which acts on the Lie algebra. This is an object that acts on the Lie algebra, and this is. Okay. So, so this is like this type of equation, like uh, are similar to the equation defining the signature, for example, but they, you know they are Lie valued, uh, they're generalized, and here the, usually the signature is defined by let's say only x prime, like there, where here is uh, that's an object in R D, but this is like, more general because it belongs to the Lie algebra, okay. And just working on this point of view, you can uh, find like this dynamical version of this translation, which was defined purely algebraic with a, a coproduct. When I mean algebraically, it meaning that you have a coproduct and you have extraction contraction similar to renormalization. Okay, so uh, I have some, how much time do you have? Zero probably. Minus two, okay, so just maybe I, I uh, just to thank you, so because in this week there has been spoken a little bit about that, so just uh, for people that maybe you can, if you didn't see, um, like there was a very nice talk uh, by Rosa, who spoke about um, um, the, uh, a particular case of this equation where you, you have this sum on rot path. Okay? So you can really define this type of differential equation. You can define a notion of sum of a path, kind of interesting. And also there was a very nice talk by Ludwig, which uh, extended this, let's say, on a, uh, extended this notion of translation in a post Lie algebra. Of course, uh, in this paper, I just state the geometric case, but you can generalize it to any of algebra and to understand what happens. Of you know, it's always like. In, if you have an equation, you have uh, uh, equivalence of equations. So one equation is equivalent to another, and you can describe with, always with us lo a lot of differential equation. And uh, it's uh, interesting because uh, you have an alternative description. Okay, I think it's, uh, so thank you, Rosa, and thank you, Ludwig, and thank you very much for this conference. What's uh, so special in practice about smooth uh, rough path? So do you think of uh, like natural examples where a perturbation by a smooth rough path is natural? Or? That's exactly, okay. This is a point. The thing is like what you can also do, which is kind of uh, interesting. It's, uh, for example, this notion of sum that was uh, in, uh, given by Rosa. So it's like you can uh, sum a rough path, hold the rough path plus a smooth rough path. So it, it gives you, let's say, some uh, way of perturbing. So it's like some sort of a way of, um, you know, you, you take uh, uh, some, like, a, you, know, you have some direction taken by smooth rough paths and you want to describe with, uh, these things, uh, plus and this, this uh, uh, smooth object, and you try to understand some canonical, if uh, along this direction you have some properties like some this is like uh, that maybe you have some functional on that and you want to understand along this direction you have some property, something like that. And um, in principle, it, it, the, the thing was like, just really to have a maybe simple equation, simple way to compute and to, to look at uh, this translation operation, especially in the branch setting. In the branch setting, uh, it's a little bit, uh, this map is possible to de define translation, but in the branch setting, 
it's possible only to know the adjoint of this map. The adjoint this map is a extraction contraction, but the direct map itself, it's a little bit complicated because uh, there are um, Grossman Larson product and so on. So if I give you a forest, uh, good luck <laughs> with that. So if I give you a dual forest, uh, it's not easy to, to compute and to, you know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, if, you, if you give yourself uh, one path, maybe not smooth, uh, is there an existence theorem uh, saying that there exists a smooth first path above it? If you take Macron, if you take it non-smooth, so the restriction you should. Uh, no, no, not to, no. Okay, no. Okay, let's say if you have a smooth first path, then by projection you will have a, a smooth path on smaller component. Uh, okay, so it should be no, in some sense. There is no, because if you take this smooth road path should contain the initial inf information, no? The smooth uh, road path should uh, also, I mean, the thing, uh, no, there is no smooth road path. What you can do is, uh, for example, like, um, um, you know, the, the thing is about, I did, uh, I was a little bit sloppy on this, but the idea is like uh, by density. So it's like you take something that uh, by density approach this, a non-smooth object and you try to build something up to there and you try to see if there is a, a way to modify it to take a, something above. But the thing is, like, it's not like, uh, in this pro from this perspective, the lifting of an object is not so much important. What is like starting with a, a smooth object already and to look at it uh, already as a group valued object because uh, the lifting has like some tangential direction which are not, uh, which are always zero because it's the lifting of a, of a path. So it's a specific way of lifting a path. And uh, if you take just a generic smooth object, maybe you have a different direction where it's not zero. Yeah. Yeah, as the other people, I'm also trying to understand better this concept of a, of a smooth rough path. And uh, you mentioned that uh, the group that uh, you take values in is the free nipotent Lee group. If I remember my reading of Peter and Nicholas Wickfer's book well, it's not only a metric space, it's also a geodesic space, right? So you have yes, geodesic, yes, you, yeah. and it often happens that since geodesics minimize certain, whatever, you can write minim, down minimizing uh, fu functionals that you minimize. Yes, exactly. Um, is this exactly the yeah. yeah. metric? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly, it often happens business. that the uh, longer the geodesics are much smoother than you would initially hope that they are. So my question would be, can you, for example, say, um, can you, let me say this, so, um, can you identify a uh, smooth rough path or a subset thereof as geodesics in that space? Ooh. That's, uh, okay. My knowledge of Kernok Ratadori metric is not enough developed to give a correct answer Maybe to that. But, you know, I, I would say that, uh, um, I, I would say that, um, You know, smooth road paths uh, can also be seen as road paths, so they're, are, they're included, no? It's like a special class of this object. But they... Exactly, so... Exactly, so in some... I mean, I, I, I think that there might be some connection, so, but... Uh, and, the, and this is a smooth, this is a included and dense on it. So, maybe... You can take the, the distance between two smooth or paths and try to see what happens, but I, I don't know. It's and a very special case of the smooth path, right? But they are? Or no, I mean, do you know that geodesics are in this sense? Uh, I would expect, but I'm... Uh, because that would be one example where you can say this is a, right, so some... Exactly, but... Yeah, I would have to check, uh, but, uh, but like smoother paths are way more general. Most of them can't possibly be geodesic. 